So this is part two of the video where we <coughs> went over arrays and lists. So in part one, remember that we have our list set up, but this is a single dimensional array. In this video here, all right, I've set up a 2D array. The way that you do this, now these are numbers, just FYI, they don't have any speech marks over them, so they're not strings. We're using integers here. This is what it looks like in a grid. I've got 2, 3, 4, 1, 0, 2. What we do to split that up to write it as an array is we have one set of square brackets for per row, and then you separate it for, by a comma. Now, where we go through the list here, if I needed to pick a single item out, so these are scores from a football game for individual teams, how many goals they've scored, we could say. All right. Now, what we could then do there is if I need to print out the number three, all I'd need to do is scores. Your first square bracket represents your row. So this is row zero because our index always starts at zero and so this is row zero here so that's row zero this is row one then we've got the column so each of these are your columns so you've got your row and I'm going to annotate that so you understand it you've got your row and then your column so zero one so if I wanted the number three all right, just so you know that that is this one here. All right, if I needed to print the number two here, I would do print scores. I'm going to do a square bracket there and a square bracket there. Now I want the number two from this row. So which row is this on? One. One, yep, so that's one. Zero, one, zero, one, two. So I need row one and column two because our index starts at zero. So again, this is our row. This is our column. Generally speaking, what you will need to be able to do, all right, say for example, I wanted <coughs> to write a program that added every single number. These are the sorts of programs you get in a GCSE that you have to be able to do. Take every single item and add it to a total. All right. We're going to s start off <coughs> doing total equals zero. So I've declared my variable. Uh, you often need a temporary, temporary variable to store a total in. Now what I'm going to do there this is where it's slightly different. Instead of using I and J, just to make it clear, I'm going to use the word row and column. All right. So for, all right, row in, I'm going to use numbers at this point just to demonstrate it. Row in range, how many rows have we got? Two. Yeah, there's going to be two iterations. So. Row and range <coughs> two, but then you to do your next one for how many columns have we got? Three. In range three. Now what that's going to do is start at the first row. Then, inside that row, it jumps into the next loop. And now it's going to go by column. But what you can then do is total equals total plus, and we're going to say scores. It's going to, because it's going to use the row reference, the row, n this will not increase until it's gone to the end of the columns. All right. Row. No, I've not put a number in here, and I'll explain why in a minute. All right. Total is total plus scores, row, and column. Then, when that's finished, there's nothing needed there. And when this loop's finished, 
it's going to say print total. Now what's happening here, all right, is it starts at the first row, all right, so it's going to go to zero. So this is the value of row. This does not increase until this code is completed. So then column needs to do its loop before that can happen next. So column's going to go 0, 1, 2. But because row stays the same, that would be what it looks like. <coughs> but then, when it's finished doing all of that, it goes on to the next one. So that value would now increase to row, would be 1, and column would go 0, 1, 2. And that's what's happening inside that. So you don't need to be specific. You're literally updating that. Because these change... These values change with each iteration automatically. Hopefully that makes sense. Yes, so question. Will it, will it print the total of all of the numbers? The yeah, because your total, all right, we've used whatever the value is of total. Total's updating with every loop because we've now assigned it a new value, but we use the its newest. So whatever that was updated to the next time around, I'm adding to myself. Think about it. Yeah, so if that's suddenly become 30, the next time around it's going to say 30 plus whatever value, and it keeps taking it in. Now, if you wanted to, with strings or text, I could concatenate, so I could make one really long sentence. There are lots of different things you can do. And the same method would work as shown here with a while loop, but what you would need to do, again, is you would set up counters. All right, you'd set up your counter and you would increase it that way. Again, in here, as if you refer to the previous video, you can do the length of your array. You could do the length of it, but then you can do for column in row. So for each row, the yeah. So that is another method. So I'm hoping that that will give you some better understanding of how iteration works, particularly when it comes to loops, because there is always some form of question <coughs> around using iteration with <coughs> loops. All right? So I'm going to leave that there, and I will upload these videos so you can watch them back when you're revising, okay?